a friend that's sitting closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We get a reference in tonight. Hallelujah. With all your hearts tonight, we worship you.
privilege tonight to praise the Lord tonight. Uh, and I want you to hallelujah from all the depths of your heart tonight to sing out, uh, to clap your hands, to rejoice because he's a God that is not dead, but the Bible said he's alive tonight. Uh, and he that had bread ought to praise God all the time. Amen. Uh, lift your hands and give him a wave offering tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We give you praise tonight.
so good to you. Praise his holy name. But I realized tonight is that we are under a yellow, yellow, a little pigment. But I like to see the colors we have here tonight. We don't have yellow. See blue, green, and all colors. We looking good. I said we looking good. Praise the Lord. So somebody whispered in your heads today that we want to have rain tonight. Did you hear me? I said somebody whispered in your heads today we won't have rain tonight. Why? Because tonight we come to meet the Lord. Come on. I said we come to meet the Lord. Come on. That's all right. Rain when you get home is all right. Rain tomorrow. But you see Saturday, we coming again to be with the Lord. Come on, somebody. Is that all right? No reasons. Come on, hallelujah. Give the Lord a high one of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God said, if the Lord be for us, then who can be against us? Or what can be against us? God is for us. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I just want to take a few moments. I want to elaborate a little bit tonight. What are we having on the first of December? Let me see, like most of the people don't know. What kind of feast, what kind of thing we have in here? On the first Saturday in December, or the first of December, what are we really having here? I hear two, three people. Hardly anybody know what's going on here. Come on. Now, how many people attend service here regularly? Let me see your hands. How many? I hear all the time. Well, in case you missed that, I want you to know the type of man that you're looking at, the type of person. Did you go to me here to appreciate? And I'm going to use myself as a demonstrator. Then you will understand what is happening to you. Well, I was hospitalized with diabetes, which I never knew about. This hand was swollen three times the size it is. How many remember that? He said, how many remember that? Amen. It was blue, black. And in the mouth hook, they wanted to cut it off. They told me, they said, Mister, if you don't cut off that hand, you're a dead man. I said, this is God's hand. We ain't cutting it off. Amen. I said, if you don't want to cut it off, then all we can do is put you in a room by yourself. They put me in a room by myself. And I spent one week there, I said, the doctors passing 10, 12 every day. And the hand just oozing and oozing. Very painful. But I still wouldn't give in. Is that all right? Amen. And it was a Wednesday night, like you hear, Wednesday morning. The Lord told me, sign out from this hospital. They're going to kill you here. Sign out in the key when I sat right there. Those folks sitting there right here. It's been holy right there. And in the evening time, they were planning to send me. First time I heard it in West Shore. And the medical associates. First time in my life I heard those names. They wanted to send me somewhere up there. But I waited in the Lord at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Then he was rampant. The whole hospital was packed out. No room in there, no beds. Thank God for Sister Sally. Who know the administrator out there? So I got in and I was placed on the bunker that the doctors give the injection on in the office. While everybody sleep in the wheelchairs, sleep outside, even on the floors, I was inside. Is that all right? But they began to take care of the hand and the best they could, and then came the same result. Mister, if you don't cut off the hand, You'd be a dead man. Are you listening to me tonight? Amen. I said, are you hearing me tonight? Amen. So it was with this at Bondo, and then confirmed again at San Grande. 
And that was the Saturday already. And the Sunday night came your brother. What I said? I said the Sunday came your brother. Amen. And he said that the Lord told me three days. Amen. Amen. While the doctors came and told me on Thursday, we'll be cutting. Uh -huh. The doctors came and told me on Thursday, it's operation time, we'll be cutting. Amen. And the Lord sent a message <laughs> that your prophet is not all right. Amen. Three days. Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, come on somebody. Come on. What kind of man is this? I said, what kind of a man is this? On the Wednesday night I went to sleep with all the pain and the hands swollen as usual. And all the doctors and nurses came and checked. But you know something? When I woke up on Thursday morning, everything just went. I said everything just went. Drive all the way up. It looked like the hands of a baby. Come on, someone. Are you understanding what I'm saying tonight? Have you had some of these experiences? Well, that's what you find in this ministry. This is what happens when you prophet tell you, expect so and so. So and so, there is such and such wrong with you. Amen. So and so with your life. In other words, you have a showman of God. Real prophets. You can put your heart, you can put your trust, put your confidence that God is born to. And you still get tonight. Well, this is the man you come into honor. The Bible said to give honor to whom honor is due. Come on, somebody. Because this man is so dear to us, so precious to us. We want to give our best. I said we want to give our best. Is that all right? Are you hearing me in the back? Yeah. That is the first Saturday in December. It's also the first of the month. Yeah. Are we still in? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want you to spread the news yeah. to all the branches, yeah. to all the people you know who comes. Amen. Who visits? That that's the night. We want to honor Prophet Julian. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That is the man is worthy. Hallelujah. What a blessing I have with the song. Ooh. And I know what hurt is, I know what pain is. I'm quite familiar with it. Not once, not twice. But all the time. Sometimes I stand there and you don't know what kind of pain. So much pain is so much this, so much this, all this. But God has been good to me with courage and strength. Are you understanding? Amen. Amen. He's promised to heal my body. He's promised to renew my strength. He's promised that I'll do more in my age and all than I ever did in my whole life. So I'm not worried about all those pain and all those hurt. And if anything can encourage you, I want to sing this song for you tonight. That Jesus knows your pain. And he feels your pain. Is that all right tonight? And I knew that while I was in that hospital bed. Because when the prophet came and said three days, my heart became glad to know that my God was about in the way. Is that all right? He was fighting for me. Come on, somebody. Well, Jesus knows your hurts. And Jesus feels your pain. Jesus knows just how you feel. He went through the same. Now Jesus knows your needs far better than you do. Just hold on to Jesus. He's a holy one to you. Sing it. Now Jesus knows your needs. Listen to this simple 
He's alive to heal. He's alive to rescue. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, give it to Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. The scripture says, Amen, somebody. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, he laughs of the Lord and gladness. Come before his presence. Let's sing it. Amen, somebody. For the Lord he is God. It is he that has made us. And that we are ourselves. Amen, somebody. And so we need to use the weapons of our warfare. Amen. The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Amen, somebody. Who are they mighty through God? So they never say your might is through God. Your deliverance is through God. Your breakthrough is through God. Your healing is through God. This God tonight. unto righteousness and when our mouth our confession is made unto what righteousness amen somebody or the salvation sorry amen somebody amen somebody the believers say the word salvation means to be saved amen somebody so what you believe in your heart you're going to confess with your mouth amen somebody amen somebody and whenever you are confessing when you are you are speaking to your neighbor your wife your husband your family when it be in ignorance, when it be in emotion, when it be out of anger, that is your confession. Jesus said what goes in does not defile the man, does not condemn the man, does not destroy the man. But what comes out of the heart of the man, that is who the man is, and that is what destroys the man, that is what condemns the man. And as a believer, we got a watch of a confession. Transform! 
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. And we send our children to school is an educational thing. Amen. Yes. When we come to the house of God, it's a spiritual thing. Amen. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's a spiritual thing. Amen, amen somebody. And when God made us, He made us a, amen, a tripartite being. Amen, somebody. One being. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. But has a different parts of that being that make it one. Amen, somebody. He gave us a body. Did not even say He gave you a body? Amen. And don't forget that the body is Adamic. It is uh, affected by sin. It was born in sin uh, and it was shaped with iniquity. Uh, and then he gave us, amen, somebody, a spirit, amen, somebody, amen, somebody. Uh, and then he gave us a soul, amen, somebody. And the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, uh, and the emotion, amen, somebody, amen, somebody. The spirit is neutral uh, with all the soul, amen, somebody. The soul is what directs the spirit of a man. Amen, somebody. Are you understanding what I'm telling you tonight? Amen, somebody. The spirit cannot move or do anything without the soul. Amen, somebody. The soul is the mind, the will, or the emotion. Neither the body can do anything without the spirit and without the soul of man. So when God sees us, he does not see the flesh and blood. He sees what is within the man. Amen, somebody. What a man wants. What a man desires. What a man hungers for. What a man chooses after. What a man heart is upon. What a man mind is upon. What is affection is upon. And the Bible says, set now your affection on things of power, but on things of the earth. For where our heart is, And if our heart is in heaven, the Bible said we shall be risen with him. Now is that speaking about the resurrection day? He's not speaking of one rising from the dead. He's speaking about one rising from the ashes of this life, from the bondage of this life, from the sin of this life, from the torment of this life. One being free from ancestral curse, one being free from demon spirits, one being free from sickness, from diseases. Amen, somebody. One being free from emotional disorder. From mental disorder, from wrong choices and decisions that have led us to life of darkness, of hurt, of pain, and of cross. Amen, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? So, the amen, somebody. With a heart, man believes unto righteousness. With that same heart, we can believe unto bondage, unto darkness, unto sin, unto destruction. Amen. Somebody, but with that very hard, we can believe unto righteousness. Amen. And where righteousness is working, life is working. Amen. Everybody here, righteousness, they, 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 they just think about being strict and being straight. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. And you understand what I'm telling you. Amen. But the Bible says the law of the spirit of life is in righteousness. So those that are walking righteousness are operating in the law of life. And Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. 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 Am I speaking to somebody? Jesus said, I have come that you might have more life and have it more abundantly. You can have a confession of anger, of hatred, of malice, of jealousy, of pride, of drunkenness, of weakness, of fear, of doubt. Amen, somebody. By what you speak and the way that you think, the Bible says that we sin or we live ungodly or unrighteous. Amen, somebody. The scripture, amen, it tells us how it starts. Amen, somebody. It said that if man is sick, when he is, when he is carried away yes. by the enticement yes. of the lust or the desire 
or the affection thereof. Then after sin is conceived. Amen. 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 So we can be what carried away. And anything we are carried away, we, we can become obsessed with. So we can become obsessed with anger and hatred and bitterness and strife and division. Amen, somebody. And, and pride and unforgiveness. Amen, somebody. We can become obsessed with fear. But the Bible says fear do it will, will torment us. We cannot be afraid of anything. But fear will bring a depression and oppression and despair and anxiety. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. We can be oppressed with what? The spirit of fear. And the fact that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness. There is a boldness to what? We have boldness coming from the Bible. And by faith, we have access into the throne of grace. We have boldness. Maybe we can boldly access the throne room of God, the power of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. And I'm speaking to somebody to the spirit that God has like, given us the spirit to fear. Yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah. God has not given the spirit to fear. Yeah. Jesus has fear that the one can destroy this body. But fear the one can destroy. Both soul and spirit on the last day. You see, because the body is temporary, but the soul and the spirit is everlasting. Amen, somebody. And in the reality that we live in, Satan causes us to bypass the true reality of eternity. Amen, somebody. Because we are living a life based on temporal values and not eternal values. Hallelujah. And when we live a life based on temporal values, we begin to battle against flesh and blood. Because we do not see our true enemy or true opponent. We see people. We see flesh and blood and we cannot see spirits and are manifesting to steal, to kill and to destroy. To destroy homes and families, to bring addictions. Amen, somebody. Over our lives to put our children on the streets. Amen, somebody. The Bible said, for every we knew him as God, we honored him not as God. And the Bible said, our hearts become darkened. It means we were once enlightened with the truth and power of God. But when we come, our hearts became separated from God. Somewhere in the mix, somewhere in the battle, somewhere in the struggle, we lose faith. We lose hope and our heart become darkened because the Bible says that which is not of faith is sin. Turn to your name and say, be careful of your confession. <laughs> Everything that we speak, does Jesus said every idle word. Listen to Jesus. Said, every word. Every idle word. We shall give an account for Because Jesus is the power of our words. It doesn't matter if we still it when you're angry, bitter, or jealous. He knew he knows the power in our words. And that's why he gave us the fruit of the Spirit to dominate and destroy the manifestation of the flesh. To kill the Adamic nature. And the fruit of the Spirit will manifest in us. 
Take the name and say, if you are here tonight for your miracle, for your breakthrough, for your deliverance, your confession, what your heart believes is most important. Jesus said, the scripture that you must draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. He said, you must, you, you got to knock, unless you don't knock, it shall not be open. Unless you don't seek, you will not find. Unless you go to hunger and thirst after righteousness, you can't receive that blessing from the Lord. Amen. 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 He said, unless you don't ask, you can receive. And said, even when asking, we must ask according to his will. Amen. Even when praying, and when asking, it must be according to his will. So if what we are praying and asking for is not according to his will, then whose will is it according to? Then who is working? Speech up. Amen. Are you understanding? Amen. That's why it's important to seek God and acknowledge Him even when we pray that we might have direction from God of our prayer. That we might know the destiny and plan and purpose of God in our lives. That we might be able to direct our prayer according to His will. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, be careful what you are confessing. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Solomon said, the body of a man will sustain his wounds. But he said, a wounded spirit who can bear. Amen. Are you understanding? Amen. He said that the body is, it can easily be repaired and healed from a cut from a wound. But a broken mind, a broken heart, one that is tormented from within, who can bear Satan's attack in the physical? Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. It's really meant to destroy what we believe, how we think, how we feel, to take it from one of faith and hope and love to one of fear, doubt, unbelief, hate and bitterness. His job is to destroy us from within, to create doors and avenues to enter into our lives. Amen. Demon spirits do not come in our house because we leave the door open. Amen. Or because we're walking the door forward or we're walking backward. Amen. They come in in our house to torment you. Amen. So a door and a window being locked with earthly devices do not stop demon spirits. Do not stop witchcraft and sorcery. Their entrances is the weaknesses that they find looking in our hearts, looking in our minds, and they know how to target us, to destroy us, and to set us up. Our confession is what we believe. Yeah. Our confession, amen somebody, is the choices we have made. Our confession is the choices we are going to make. Our confession is what we believe in our heart. Amen somebody. Amen. Amen, amen somebody. Some of us have to change our system of belief in how we look at God. Amen. How we look at church. Amen. How we look at men of God. Amen. How we look at the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. And begin to understand. And when God sees you. Amen. 
He sees you in a personal manner. Tell me what God sees you. He sees you in a personal manner. He doesn't see you in how righteous your your amen somebody. Your outlook about your pastor, your prophet is. When he sees you, he beholds your good and your evil. When you stand before him, you can say, Well, I was I went I was in Benny Hill ministry. Amen. I was in Shambak ministry. I was in Rod Pastry ministry. Amen. I was in Ryan Hand Mountain ministry. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. When he begins to speak to you, the knowledge of his word will come out of you. Amen. And you will accompany the knowledge of that word. In the same way, Satan is looking at the knowledge of that word in you. Amen, somebody. Amen. And you become that target. If you, amen, somebody. He's going to target you. Amen. And if you are using the knowledge of that word, he will destroy you. Amen. If you are using the knowledge of that word, you will be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. Amen. That's right. The, the apostle Paul said, Finally, my vision be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Amen. So that's why Jesus he said, He said, He's going to give us a comfort every word. And, and in every idle word. The different between, amen. When you speak about an idle word, it means you speak it something that it didn't mean. Whether it be in the form of a joke, when, or whatever it may be, it's an idle word. If you said yes, and in your heart you meant no. If you said no, and in your heart it, it, is, it meant yes, it is, it's idle. If you promised to do something and I didn't do it, it is idle. Is that why I said that you're yes be yes? And your no be no. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? So when you are being taxed, uh, attacked by witchcraft, by sorcery, by demon spirit, then don't come and you could be praying like a praying man just five hours a day. Amen. And if everything that happens in your life moves you emotionally. Amen. Moves you that you your word of God cannot subdue your carnal emotion, cannot subdue your carnal mind and uh, transform it. Satan will defeat you every time. He will enter every time. Amen. If your pattern of thoughts, your mind is not being renewed. Amen. You can fast 52 days and lost 25 pounds and all even a loss. Amen. 25 pounds. Amen. But if the mind is not renewed, Amen. the life is not renewed. Amen. That's why David said that the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Keep me from presumptuous sins and secret faults. Let them not have dominion or authority over my life. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 The Bible speaks about a book of remembrance about people who got to speak about the word of God. Amen. But what about the book of remembrance for those who got to speak idle words? Amen. For those who got to calculate people's lives. Amen. Our calculation doesn't matter before God. Amen. The Bible says many are the plans that are in a man's heart. But it is the counsel of God that shall prevail. And if 
with our plans is opposite to the counsel of God. We are fighting against God. Therefore, we will not succeed. Therefore, Satan will find room to destroy us. Our plans must be in accordance to his counsel. Hey, let me say our plans must be in accordance with his counsel. His counsel. His counsel is the eternal counsel of God. The eternal will of God. What's happening? The counsel of God. Hey, that's a man. And there's a counsel for the right path, and there's a counsel for the wrong path. Amen. Amen. So you can hear the things of our sister. If you are sick, say I'm healed. If you are poor, say I'm rich. If you are weak, say I'm strong. If you are going to battle, say I shall overcome. I shall conquer. I am more than a conqueror to fight Jesus who stated me. If you are found in sin and adultery and fornication, but rely upon the confessor. Amen, somebody. And ask and seek for deliverance from God. And he shall deliver you. But the Bible, he got life of calling the sins of Amen. 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 You will only lie when you want to abide. Amen. Amen. You will only lie when you want to keep faith with this false pride. And the man that pride cometh before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. So when we lie, we are coming our sin, our spirit is haughty and our destruction is nigh. So the Bible says he resisted the cross and he gave grace to who? The humble. And then humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he shall lift you up. James shall purify your heart. He shall remind it and cleanse your heart. For the Bible says that the minded man is unstable in all other ways. You can't be in and out at the same time. It's either you are in the kingdom of God, in the presence of God, or you are out of the kingdom and out of the presence of God. But you cannot be in and out at the same time. Amen. 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 So there is a change law. God has been given the prisoner and the savior of confession. I begin to believe God for a miracle, for a breakthrough and deliverance. Command them out! Command them out! Spirit of fear! Spirit of doubt! Spirit of unbelief! In the name of Jesus! Command them out of your life! Command them out of your body! Any spirit of infirmity! Command the Holy Ghost! To begin to heal your kidneys!
can bring some water for me that Jesus cannot heal. Never a sickness or a disease. Hallelujah. The sisters on the cross are attacking and dropping a walk. You have the spot, the walk of witches and wizards. The walk of necromancy. Every foul spirit, every spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the anointing of God is set in this water. The hood of the master of the destroyer of powers of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that which is not of God shall come out and be uprooted by the power of the Holy Ghost and fire in the name of Jesus give us a drink in the name of Jesus as we are blessed that water for her and it shall be a blessing unto her and that which is not of God is going to come out of her body come out of her blood come out of her fluid come out of her stomach come out of her womb come out of her head I 
Get down. 